Kirillo Duchko, Staff Sergeant of the Public Relations Service of the 13th Operational Brigade, Charter of the National Guard of Ukraine, noted that the enemy does not take its military, both killed and wounded, from the battlefield. He told about this on Espresso TV. The enemy does not take away its killed personnel. They are lying in the middle of an open field. I'll tell you more. The Russians do not even evacuate their wounded. Accordingly, the wounded are either dying themselves or the Ukrainian Defense Forces are helping them. For example, we recently helped one of the wounded Russians near our positions. We dropped a note and water from a drone, then took him out, after which he surrendered, said the staff sergeant. Kirillo Duchko noted that the Russian soldier who surrenders will live and will be exchanged for a Ukrainian military in the future. Spokesman of the Kharkiv Operational Tactical Group, Colonel Vatily Sarantsev, said that Russia does not take away the corpses of its soldiers left on the battlefield in the Kharkiv region. According to him, the Russian troops almost never evacuate the dead, leaving the bodies to fend for themselves. The enemy almost does not carry out evacuation measures for the dead. If he still tries to somehow evacuate the wounded, then irreversible losses remain on the battlefield. Now the heat has returned to the Kharkiv region and this, of course, creates a problem for the enemy, said Sarantsev. The enemy continues active assault operations on all areas of the front. This is already known to everyone in the Vovchansky direction and its adjacent settlements, as well as in the Hlybok Lipsy direction, where the enemy is trying to penetrate into the depth of our defense by all means, Sarantsev said. Despite this, the armed forces successfully restrained the offensive of the occupiers, preventing the loss of positions, he added. The armed forces of Ukraine have begun using aviation during the offensive in the Kursk region. Soviet fighters are being used for attacks. A MiG-29 fighter jet of the Ukrainian Air Force struck an underground Russian command post with French AASM hammer bomb in the Kursk region. According to some information, Ukrainian Su-27 fighter attacked a Russian command post in the village of Tetkino, several kilometers north of the front line. Ukrainian aircraft dropping American JDM bombs on targets in the Kursk region. Russian air defenses around Kursk are also very strong. This explains why the Su-27 in question was spotted flying just a few hundred feet above the battlefield after dropping its glider bombs. Pilots on both sides try to fly as low and as often as possible to avoid detection by enemy radar. Around the same time that the Su-27s were bombing Russian positions in Kursk, other Ukrainian aircraft were bombing three Russian-held towns in the Kharkiv region, about 100 miles east of the Kursk salient. Ukraine's operation in the Kursk region has shown that surprises are back in war. The Telegraph's deputy editor Dominic Nichols analyzes Ukraine's tactics and what Kiev is trying to achieve. The journalist points out that Kiev's troops currently hold about 1,000 square kilometers of territory inside Russia. In the last seven days, they have seized more territory than Russia has in the last year. The Kremlin was forced to declare a state of emergency in the Kursk and Belgorod regions. Moscow has left most of the border unguarded, a stunningly stupid and arrogant decision. And Ukrainians know that Russian military is at its weakest when it has to react quickly. The Kremlin's favored rigid top-down model of leadership, which slows decision-making and discourages independent thinking and action, knows only mass and exhaustion, the report says. The author emphasizes that the Russian army cannot adapt to the tempo on the battlefield. According to him, Ukraine's tactics and the surprise with which they were applied may not last even a week, but this is not necessary. The Ukrainian armed forces have already proven that such things can be done and can use experience in other areas. The journalist says that in this case, Kyiv's ground forces act as a naval strike group, which has the ability to strike along and across the coast. The enemy never knows exactly where the next strike will be. This is an effective way for Ukraine to keep Russia on edge. 
Putin should also be concerned that Ukraine has demonstrated the ability to use combined arms maneuvers in which tanks, infantry and engineers can work together without turning into a chaotic mess. The Observer emphasizes that this will give confidence not only to Kiev's troops and the entire Ukrainian society, but also to Western sponsors. They will be able to see a return on their investment in military equipment. If the Russian army can be shown to be beaten in the field, then, amid increasingly loud calls for negotiations, Ukraine could plan another surprise attack and thereby strengthen its trump cards.